Hello, this is Steve M. Potter. I'm going to show a time-lapse video I made of building this workbench. And I took a photograph every five seconds. You can see that we just got the angle irons into the garage. The, um, I'm taking some notes there and measuring and finding out how long to make the legs, which I've laid out on the floor there. Testing out the new uh, chop saw, the um, Evolution Fury 3 compound miter saw and cutting the legs to the right length so that the table will be at a height that is about as high as my elbow when I'm standing next to it, which happens to be about a meter off the ground. And I'm also, I also got a new grinder and I was attaching that to a small uh, plank of wood, which I can then move around to different locations and eventually put on this workbench that I'm building. Now, putting the casters on the bottoms of the legs, these are ones that I got at Ikea, and uh, you can take one of the casters and cut it in half, and then turns out that half of a caster fits perfectly on the planks of wood that I used for the legs there. So I'm using the drill press to add extra holes to the bottom of the casters, um, the caster bases, the things the casters plug into, and uh, that way there will be three holes in the bottom of each caster base, and I screwed some fairly long wood screws into the um, bottom of the legs to hold those caster bases in. <clears throat> the wood just got delivered. Pl big 4x8 sheets of plywood, MDF, and oriented strand board, and also some extra uh, 2x4s or 4x2s, depending on where you live. So I'm doing some calculations there, measuring thicknesses, trying to figure out where exactly to put holes in the tops of each leg that will be used for the big bolts that hold the legs to the top of the table. These are called barrel nut joints, I think. They're the kinds of uh, joints that you often see on IKEA furniture. If you've ever assembled something flat packed from IKEA, you often had to put these little nuts in and then turn a screw, turn the nut uh, 90 degrees to tighten the bolt. Uh, sometimes they might have something even sturdier than that, uh, than just tightening it a little bit. And um, so I'm measuring and fitting those, um, doing some calculations. It's always good to have good lighting. So here I'm drilling the bolt holes in the ends of each leg. So two holes, there's two bolts per leg. And to do that, I put on a chair layers of cardboard and wood to get the hand drill at just the right height so that when I pushed it in, it would stay level and it'd be at the right height. Now I'm sanding the two by fours, the four by twos, um, just because they were kind of rough and, and splintery when I got them, so fixing them up so they're not so dangerous. Now we're moved into the living room here, put some of the wood in the living room. The plywood sheet there got a bit warped. As you, well, there's barrel distortion on the lens, but it wasn't quite as bad as it looks there. Uh, so I mopped it with uh, water on the concave side to expand that side, and then I put the couch on it to weigh it down. Now I'm building the frame that goes under the table out of those 4x2s and using a right angle clamp to hold two corners together while I drilled them with big long wood screws using hand drill. I also drilled pilot holes through the first piece of wood so that the second piece of wood would be pulled towards it when it was tightened. Now we go outside where I'm painting the angle irons, <clears throat> laid them out on a tarp and painted them with water-based paint. And as you'll find out later, uh, that was, might have been a bad idea because I left them overnight and the dew got on there and made them rusty. This frame here is not quite laying flat on the OSB, even though the OSB is on a flat floor and the OSB was flat. There's a second coat of paint there. And um, that's because some of the lumber was a bit twisted. So I tacked it down with some wood screws so it'll be flat before I put these legs on. So I'd clamp each leg and then make sure that it was laying flat on its end. And then I put in wood screws to hold the legs to the frame and then unscrewed the screws that were holding the frame to the OSB, flipped it over, and now I'm tracing the corners with tracing paper very carefully, and then I put it on top of the frame and mark where the holes are in each of the tops of the legs. You can see I also put the casters in there just to make it handy to move around. <clears throat> and I went and drilled holes through the OSB in the right places using the tracings that I had made now we're back in the garage, 
The MDF is on the floor as a nice flat surface to work on. Those are the girders that got a little bit rusty in the dew, the morning dew, so they're sitting there drying under the hot lamp there. This video is sped up by a factor of about 150, I think. I think of 5 frames per second and it's playing at uh, 30 frames per second, or 5 seconds per frame. <coughs> So now I'm drilling holes in the MDF that will clear the washers that will be in the top of the table, at the top of the very big bolts. So I drilled eight, of, eight big holes in there with a hole saw. And I'm pushing on the frame to see how sturdy it is. Now I'm doing a lot of planning and figuring, trying to figure out how, which uh, angles should I put the angle irons in, which diagonal parts of this um, frame need bracing and now I'm cutting those to the right length. You want to be careful and wear your eye protection when you're doing cutting of metal. I used a bevel cut here so that the uh, angle iron wouldn't have any big right angles sticking out here and there. I, after a while I learned to put my hat on so that hot metal shavings wouldn't go into my hair. So I'm test fitting the uh, angle irons on the frame itself to make sure that they come out right uh, because the frame, you know, the legs are not perfectly vertical and everything is not perfectly straight. So it's good to have the, um, the braces match what reality is rather than my ideal of what it should be. I also washed, I drilled holes in the ends of each of those angle irons on the drill press and then I washed the oil off the ends of them because I wanted to paint um, the ends, the cut ends with paint and I wanted the paint to stick. So here I'm fixing the angle irons to the frame using big bolts as described in the Instructable and big wood uh, screws with hex heads on them so I used a socket wrench to tighten those on. Now I'm starting to assemble the tabletop, get the layers all right, put in the uh, big huge bolts and uh, put the different layers on, screw the very top layer down with just four wood screws, sanding the edges to make them all rounded and nice, clean up, got to vacuum all that stuff that I did, get the table in the right orientation, make sure it works, vacuum up the big mess that I made and show it to my lovely wife, Maraid, do a little photo session, and we're done. How about that?